I'm really excited today because we're starting a brand new sub channel that is near and dear to my heart and that is gardening specifically obviously Panama gardening now when I lived in Los Angeles I did a lot of gardening you could find me on any given day at Lowe's searching through the clearance rack for the dollar plants that had wilted because someone hadn't watered them and I brought them all back to life and we literally landscaped our entire one-third acre woo -hoo, that, that was big back then um, with clearance plants from Lowe's I mean literally at probably a 20th of the cost that it would normally cost somebody to do the landscaping that we did so plants are near and dear to my heart however I, although I love plants I don't know near enough about them as I want to and, and a lot of times I just don't have enough time to do all the research that I want to do to, to learn more I'm trying to change that here Unfortunately, I mean, just within view of this camera, I have 10 times the number of species of plants on this property that I had in Los Angeles. And, you know, there's a whole 13 acres here. So there's a lot to learn. Most of the time when I'm learning something, it's because I just stumble across it and dive deep from there. And that is exactly what brings us to our first episode in the Panama Gardening series pineapples okay I love pineapple I've always loved pineapple it's one of my favorite fruits it's fairly cheap to buy here I mean you can get them like usually for like a dollar or a dollar fifty um, and I knew people grew them because when I was in Costa Rica several years ago I was house sitting on a property in a Panama and uh, a, a Panama and a pineapple uh, ripened on the bush and this is how plant ignorant I am. I was like, oh my god, pineapples grow in a bush? I thought they would grow like on a tree or something. No, they grow on like a weird bush thing. All right, so this story begins when Brian and I were walking down this very sidewalk one day about two and a half months ago probably, and something red caught our eye. So if you kind of scan over here into these bushes, you'll see something red there. Now, the thing that we saw that was red was this, but it was bigger. And so I'll put the picture of it um, here in the video can you, so you can see. Like right now, if I saw that, I would have no idea what it was. But when we saw ours, it was obvious that it was a pineapple and I lost my pineapple mind. Okay, that baby pineapple two and a half months later is this pineapple, okay? Uh, look, I think it takes a long time for these things to uh, to mature and ripen. I forget exactly how long. I'll put it in the video, but it's a while. So that's the baby that you just saw in the previous picture, just a, a, about maybe two and a half months later. So at that point we realized, oh, well these are all pineapple plants here. And then Brian, uh, we had more pineapple plants up behind the house that were in a place where we didn't want them. So Brian moved them down here before we left for the United States. So they've been down here for what now, like seven weeks probably, seven or eight weeks? Uh, so seven or eight weeks, and they transplanted wonderfully. And the reason for this is because uh, I learned that pineapples have a very shallow root system. So you don't have to dig down too far. So if you have some where you don't want them, you just dig them up and move them somewhere else and it's not a problem. Okay, so that said, we're going to go through a whole thing of propagating pineapple because I really want to have a prolific pineapple plantation on my property. Okay, I've been practicing those peas for a while. All right, so there's a few ways to propagate pineapples. We're going to talk about them. And the first way that I did it is the way we're going to go look at first. So that's going to be up at the top of the property. So we're going to come back down here and see another way to propagate, propagate pineapples. All right, so I'm going to show you how I started propagating my pineapples because that was even before I realized I had pineapple plants. Uh, but I knew from uh, research and talking to a few people that it was really easy to propagate pineapples just from the tops. And so that's what I started doing. So you take your pineapple when you're ready to cut it up and eat it, right? Uh, you take a sharp knife and then you just cut the top right off. 
like so. Okay, so you have it like that, right? Now, what you want to do, though, is take this. Okay, look. Different people have different ways of doing this. Some people cut it like this and then plant this just like this in the ground. All right. I'm doing mine a little bit different. Um, I'm actually taking mine off the, I'm taking this excess fruit stuff off of it. Like so, okay, to get to this. And then peeling off this kind of bottom set of leaves. Some more of that fruit part off. Aha! Like that's better. Now look, I'm sure there's some pineapple experts out there that are saying, Oh my god, you're doing this completely wrong. Please, leave a comment. Like I said, I don't know anything about this. I am not a pineapple firmer yet. This one has some kind of tough brown leaves around the edge. Usually they're pretty easy to get off. Those might have to stay. Actually, I'm gonna go up a little further. Ha ha, all right. And then I'm gonna peel from here. Ah, see how much easier that is? That's the way it's been working for me. Okay, that's better. Okay. So then I get kind of this nice little base sort of thing here. Ha ha. Then these awesome water bottles I've been repurposing for pineapple planting. The tops fit perfect in there, like literally every time. So that keeps it from evaporating so much because it's kind of a tight fit there. And But what you want to make sure is that the bottom of that pineapple is in the water. Okay? And then... Miraculously, in about a few weeks, see what we have here? They root. Okay? So then we're going to take this one I'm going to set back up on the porch um, and let it, con it let it root. And then I have several of these toppings that are already uh, rooted really well. And we are going to go and create a pineapple plantation on my property. All right, so once you've started from scratch and propagated your pineapples the way I just performed up top, um, and you get mature pineapples, then you can move on to the second type of pineapple propagation, and that's from things called suckers, or as they're sometimes called here in Panama, hijos, or children. And basically they're pineapple babies, okay? Um, if you look at this pineapple here that is still maturing, you see these top stalks around here. There's one, two, three, four. Uh, and there's another little baby around here. There's five. There's five of them. And they're growing. The, the pineapple itself, let me see if you can get in here and see. Can you see in here, Brian? So the pineapple itself is growing on this stalk right here. Okay. So at the base where this pineapple is meeting the top of this stalk around the base these suckers are connected right here so the really great thing about the suckers as compared to cutting the tops off the pineapples is that these will mature and fruit for you in like half the time or less different websites give me different information but from sucker you're generally looking at anywhere from about 8 to 12 months. And from pineapple top, you're looking at like maybe 18 to 24 months before you get root. So as you see, if you can get these things off, that's the way to go. And actually, this is how commercial pineapple growers uh, propagate the pineapples for their farms is through these suckers. Because obviously, they fruit much quicker. So from what we've read, we have not done this. The way to do it to get these suckers off is to twist gently at the base, and they're supposed to just pop off. I'm putting Brian in charge of this, and if he harms my darling little baby pineapple, it's 
not going to be good. All right, Brian, you're up. All right, Brian's going to do this. And the reason I have Brian doing it is because pineapples are pokey. Um, they're really pokey on the ends, and I didn't want to get hurt. Okay, so here you can see where the eho or the sucker is attached, and he's going to just reach in there and twist. Oh, wow, that was painless pineapple propagation. Nice job, Brian. You get dinner tonight. <laughs> okay, that was really easy and cool. I've been stressing that for like two days. All right, we're going to go ahead and, and take the rest of these off, and then we're going to... Oh, look at that. See how that is right there? Okay, so we're going to take the rest of these off, and then we're going to go up top and complete this video. So as I always say, we have not explored every bit of these 13 acres that we own. I've never even been, I mean, I see this area all the time, but I've never been down here. But Brian was like, hey, come over here and look at this. And uh, he knew that there was another mini pineapple plantation that was here. So we have some more pineapple plants with uh, suckers on them here. And we have a baby there that hasn't quite yet made suckers. But you can see we have several plants here. So, I mean, we have a very prolific pineapple plantation here on the property that I didn't even know about. All right, so now we have our, uh, I have three pineapple tops that are rooted and the four suckers that we pulled from the mom plant back here. One thing I did want to point out is that the mother plant, uh, once it fruits, it will die. It only fruits once, it only produces one fruit, but it also produces those suckers, those pineapple pups. Okay, so uh, apparently if you pull them off as that fruit is maturing, it will produce more of those pineapple... Uh, pops? Pops, yeah, <laughs> pineapple pops. And, uh, and then you can harvest more off of that one plant because once that, that fruit is mature, then it's gone. If you leave the pups on the plant, uh, they will crowd each other. They will grow and eventually mature in fruit, but they'll crowd each other out for space and nutrients. So it's best to pull them off and separate them out. So now we are going to create our pineapple plantation and separate these plants out. I had originally planned to put them up right by the house. I have an awesome flat spot up there with full sun, which is what you want. Pineapples will grow in partial shade, but if you want them to fruit, you really need to get them in full sun. Had a great place up there. We started digging holes and realized all of the soil up there. And I mean, that's not what, Brian, 150 meters? Yes. Yeah. Clay. Okay, so we came down here and we dr drilled a test hole soil down here, which is a little interesting because we have a creek that kind of runs along here. And I'm sure this area floods every once in a while. Now, the reason that I wanted my pineapple plantation within close proximity to my person is because uh, we have mature fruit trees all over the property. And when the fruit matures, there is this very strange phenomenon that happens on this property. They disappear magically. I'm not sure if it's neighbors that are coming onto the property or if it's witchcraft. Speaking of witchcraft, uh, as we dig these holes, I'm going to be putting some of this uh, black dirt into each hole. It's, uh, this is a special dirt that I get. We have an indigenous village uh, just across from us, Loma Azul, and there's a man up there that creates this dirt um, with uh, cacao fruit and cow manure. So it's really, really nutritious. The problem is, is when we came back from the States, we heard that he was sick. And unfortunately, he is sick due to witchcraft, and I'm not joking. So um, hopefully he gets better soon and the spell comes off of him because A, he's an extremely nice man, and B, that's where I get my good nutritious dirt from. Okay, so we're going to plant our pl pineapple plantation and see what happens. When it comes to any manual labor portion of our program, that's where you'll see Brian. <laughs> okay, so Brian is going to dig hole, not even dig, I mean, this is like super lazy. Work smarter, work smarter, not harder. Yeah, this is the gringo way. So we're going to drill holes, um, and it's funny because that drill bit thing is like the perfect size for these pineapples to fit right into. So we're going to drill holes about three feet apart, about a meter apart, and plant our pineapples in them. 
and I want to make sure that I keep track of which were the toppers and which were the suckers because remember the suckers are going to fruit for me uh, hopefully in about 8 to 12 months whereas the toppers I'm probably looking at 18 to 24 months. All right Brian you're the star. First hole here one meter See how that makes a perfect little pineapple place? Look at that. It's brilliant. Okay, Brian made super quick work of that. That wasn't even manual labor. All right, I just want to show you the differences in the soil and like extremely small areas on this property. Like I said, right up there, we dug right into straight clay. Do not try to take it on an Air Panama flight. That's a different story. Okay, um, I want you to look at the dirt here though. See this? This is a little clayey, but not as bad as up top. But then look at this right here. Like, wow. Like massive difference in, in soil, just three feet apart. Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four holes here. We have three back here, so I'm gonna put my suckers up front and I'm going to put my toppers in the back. And then uh, this should be really easy. So here's this one. I'm gonna get some of my good good dirt from, what was that man's name, Brian? Well, Gregorino or? Gregorio. Gregorio. I, I really, really, really am terrible at names. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there just for some nutrition value. And then tuck him right in there. He needs a little bit more dirt in the bottom. I'll put a little bit of leaf in there too. I am creating a compost pile and I'll do a video on that later, but it's nowhere near ready. Alright, so I'm just going to tuck that in there. And on the bottom here. One good thing about here in the rainforest in Bocas, I don't need to worry about watering them. That will happen at least twice a day, <laughs> uh, just from nature. Okay, so that was a rooted one. Uh, I'm going to put these other rooted... Let me just put one sucker in, and then we'll just go from there. Okay, so the suckers... I didn't read anything about pulling the leaves off, so we're just going to stick them right in the ground. Whoops, let me get some good dirt. Okay. All right. I'm going to finish planting these and I'll come back and show you the finished product. Okay. I got the raw end of the manual labor stick on that one because planting them was way harder than drilling holes, but it wasn't even hard at all. I mean, this was the easiest thing I've ever planted in my life. So we have them all in the ground. We have to wait quite a while. Okay. Um, and then I'll do an update video if these guys ever fruit for me so you can see what happens. And we'll continue adding on. Uh, hopefully the mom over there will continue producing suckers and I'll pull those off and keep putting them in this area. We have the other baby that's starting to grow on the plant that's right next to it. So same thing, pull off suckers uh, and put them out here. So really the main things to remember when you're dealing with pineapples is uh, take off the suckers if you have a mature plant. That's going to be your fastest way. Uh, if you don't have a mature plant and you need to do it from toppings, cut the, the top off, peel back the leaves, put them in some water to let them root before you plant them. And have patience. Pineapples require a lot of patience. But the most important thing to remember about pineapples is when you plant them, always make sure you wear your pineapple pajama pants. Until our next episode, I'll see you on Friday.